but there are signposts pointing us home. A lot of the people I've written about over the years, Dorothy Day, Eugene McCarthy, Wendell Berry, Carolyn Chute, Grant Wood, Edward Abbey, have this in common. They walked away from power, from the soulless capitals in which power is concentrated, and they went home, well, they made new homes in places far from the bright lights. They didn't become hermits. They stayed engaged with the world, but they didn't whore out for money and power. These people learned, as I eventually learned, that uh, healthy, life-giving parochialism exists in even the most dispirited or run-of-the-mill places. And that if you want to change the world, you've got to do it within your own ambit, within your own circle of love, to use Barry's phrase. Anything grander, more far-reaching, and you're dealing with people, <coughs> not as flesh and blood and heart and soul, but as constituents, as soldiers, as abstractions, you wind up shipping them off to war or herding them into housing projects, always for their own good, of course. It's an imperfect world, flawed, but why are we here if not to love the damaged, the marred, each other? And how can we love each other unless we know each other? And how can we know each other unless we live in small communities, and that includes city neighborhoods as well as rural hamlets, but face to face, in proximity, propinquity. Otherwise, we're just passing through. Alfred, Fillmore, Batavia, our world is only healthy insofar as these places have meaning. We have within our hands, our wallets, our hearts, uh, the power to revitalize these places, it's our choice. We can sit slack-jawed in front of an idiot box whose overriding message is that our lives are trivial pursuits. Or we can coach a girl softball team. We can tend a garden or for the vegetably challenged to join a CSA. <laughs> or we can choke down the same tasteless chain fare served up in anywhere USA. We can watch friends or we can make friends. We can treat Alfred and Batavia with the love and respect they deserve, or we can toss them as thoughtlessly as we would a Big Mac wrapper. I suppose there's a sense in which my books are a kind of voice of the uh, forgotten America, the untelevised America. We're behind 27 to 1 in the bottom of the eighth, but uh, <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> Besides, maybe it's a doubleheader. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, switch teams even if I could. After all, our side is country churches and sandlot baseball, volunteer fire departments and homemade beer, home. Their side is bombs and tanks and television. I mean, how can we lose? <laughs> and there are political implications, uh, open and inviting paths that follow from a life lived locally. Decentralize. Power to the neighborhoods, as Norman Mailer proclaimed in his landmark and wonderful 1969 campaign for mayor of New York City. Devol devolve decision making to the most local level possible. Let New York City and Long Island and upstate have their own states so that they, we, are no longer ruled by distant and remote people who know absolutely nothing about our lives but have no compunction whatsoever about telling us how to live them. Defend little institutions from hostile and devouring corporate and governmental entities. Defend homeschoolers, private schools, small public schools of the sort that the grim forces of consolidation, that is centralization, want to erase. Promote farm markets, community supported ag, local culture, Local agriculture. Resist the National Animal Identification System. Denationalize the New York State National Guard and bring home our neighbors from the rotten, unconstitutional, imperialist wars they're fighting. Let a thousand, no, let 10,000 flowers bloom. It all starts with love, 
Lot love, not of some remote abstraction, some phantasm that exists only on the television screen, but love of near things, things you can really know and experience. I think love, localism, decentralism are bound together, and they provide the clearest, most humane, loveliest alternative there is to the American empire and the empire state. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.